And now, ladies and gentlemen, the world-famous Latin Casino proudly presents the star of our show, Mr. Richard Fryer. We are gathered here today on this sofa occasion to say goodbye to the dearly departed. He was dearly and he has departed. Thus, that's why we call him the dearly departed. In other words, the nigga dead. As you can see him laying here, I've been here three days, the boy ain't moved a muscle. So I know the nigga dead. And it seemed that death was quite a surprise to his ass. <laughs> Didn't think you was ever gonna die, did you, nigga? Mm, I told you about fucking around what was gonna happen. However, he faced the ultimate test as each man and woman must eventually face the ultimate test. And the ultimate test is, let me repeat that. The ultimate test is whether or not you can survive death. That's the ultimate test for your ass, ain't it? <laughs> so far, don't nobody we know have passed the ultimate test. <laughs> Least of all, this nigga laying here. Because this boy wasn't shit. I'm going to tell you that right off. I saw him kicking his mama's ass over there on 47th Street. And if you think we're going to bury you with them diamonds and shit on, you got another thing coming. I'd like to introduce the boy's woman, whole bitch. I don't know what she was, huh? She's laying over there in the booth. What? Say, girl, what you doing? Well, don't sell no pussy in here. If you do, I want to cut. Shit. Your fault the nigga dead. You'd have been home when you were supposed to be. He wouldn't have been up in the hotel fucking that faggot. <laughs> Boy's husband came home, caught him fucking, shot the nigga in the ass on the downstroke. <laughs> and if there is a God or heaven, we don't want this nigga up there with us. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Good God. Oh, a lot of niggas here today. Some white folks, too. Look at this. You motherfuckers come in a bunch, didn't you? Stick with me. Don't worry about a thing. Just come on. Shorty to white people lately. I ain't seen no white folks no more. Y'all stop fucking? <laughs> white folks into yoga. You can't get no nut doing no yoga. You got to get the pussy. They stopped fucking because some rich white man told them, said, Look, come on, cut the crap. <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's too many people on earth. I have no place to ride my horsey. There will be no shortage of niggas. 
Niggas is fucking. We got to have somebody here to take over. White folks tart our ass too. They getting them some new niggas. The Vietnamese. But bring them over, bring all of them over. Niggas won't mind. They didn't ask that shit. <laughs> We the motherfuckers got to give the jobs up for them. <laughs> Motherfuckers, I know why they like them motherfuckers too. Cause they got the kind of music they can dance to. <laughs> they try to dance to bad luck, motherfucker, get a heart attack. Damn, is it ever gonna stop? It was funny, man, pleading for the orphans and shit. God, we've got to do something. The little orphans, oh my goodness. Bitch almost had me going get an orphan. <laughs> People in Mississippi, white folks in Georgia and shit, adopting babies. Shit gonna last about a year. And that racism gonna come out. <laughs> God damn. What in the hell we got here, Marco? Ain't your eyes ever going round up? Look like one of the neighborhood coons. <laughs> And I'm for orphans now. You know, don't get me wrong. I like orphans, but shit, they got 10 million niggas here need to be adopted. <laughs> they got a show in L.A. on TV. They be selling niggas for adoption on the TV. You ever see those shows? Get one of these niggas, please. <laughs> This big head one here. He's all right. I'd take him home, but I have a dog. <laughs> got all the Vietnamese in the, in the army camps and shit, taking tests and stuff, learning how to say nigga. <laughs> so they can become good citizens. <laughs> right, they got classes, you know they have. All right, let's try again, tropes. Nigga, nigga, nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. Now that's close. If you get your ass kicked, you know you made it. <laughs> you gotta be careful fighting them motherfuckers too, Jack. Cause they know karate and kung fu and new jitsu and all that old shit, you know. And be hollering at your ass while they kick it. <laughs> I don't mind a motherfucker kicking my ass, but don't be hollering at me too. Make me mad or cry to this motherfucker. <laughs> And if you ain't done it, be careful if you get some Vietnamese pussy, Jack. Right? Because they got a VD scare the shit out of penicillin. It'd be up there waiting on penicillin, Jack. <laughs> Come on up in here, Penna. Yeah, we got something for your ass. Come on up in here. <laughs> Get a big knot on your dick, Jack. <laughs> What is it, Doc? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to touch it. I don't. Just leave it over there or whatever it is. I snorted cocaine for about 15 years with my dumb ass. I must have snorted up Peru. I could have bought Peru all the shit I snorted. Could have just gave him the money up front and had me a piece of property. I started off snorting little tiny pinches. Said, I know I ain't gonna get hooked. Not on no coke, you can't get hooked. My friends have been snorting 15 years, they ain't hooked. I thought I was snorting a little teeny, didn't even make noise. Coke etiquette, Jack. Pass the album, please. No more for me. Six months later. <laughs> 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 
licking the album shit. <laughs> Trying to get a freeze. <laughs> Somebody told me you put it on your dick, you could fuck all night. Right? Shouldn't have told me that. Just... <laughs> my dick had a Jones. <laughs> $600 a day just to get my dick hard. <laughs> and you get weird sexual fantasies too when you be on go. Just think of some weird, baby, I got a great idea. I want you to go out on the roof. I'm gonna run around the house three times. On the third time, I want you to jump off on my face. <laughs> Got a witness. <laughs> Them niggas pointing at each other. <laughs> niggas will not admit to giving up no head. <laughs> not yet, even. Uh uh, no, nah. Not the kid. Uh uh, no. Nah. Nah, I ain't no termite. Mm mm. No. Be lying their ass off. Right? And black women like head, but they won't kiss you afterward, right? No, 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 it's bad for your teeth. No, no, no. It's better to give than receive. Right? And dudes be trying to talk a lot of shit on cocaine too, right? Be thinking they making plenty of sense. Don't be saying shit. I'd be, uh, shit, I'd nick some shit, man, my shit, got him. <laughs> and the pimps get psychotic when they get high. <laughs> Them motherfuckers get all the moves together, right? Shit, I'm not in it. I got a little girl, you know what I mean? I'm not in Now, the men scream on me and say, I'm not in the man, you know? I got five hundred men, you know? Talking about the men, I got a man, you know? I'm not to wait on the line, you know? But I'm on the, over in the gun, yeah? No, no, nigga, this is the I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna hold the mess. I ain't holding the motherfucker, man. You know what I'm gonna do? Huh? Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, huh? Yeah. I'm ready for Freddy. You know what I mean? And now, niggas be holding them dicks, too, Jack. <laughs> White people go, why do you guys hold your things? <laughs> so you done took everything else, motherfucker. <laughs> Nigga be checking. <laughs> you can't tell nobody not to snort no coke. Because motherfuckers gonna snort anyway. I took me a long time to learn. That shit kill you. Man, but the big booger came out of my nose, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Motherfucking black one this long. I said, God damn. Lord, please, I'll quit, please. Just, just let it stop. <laughs> I was in jail too, man. It's cold blooded in the jail. Nixon wouldn't have lasted two days. They'd have turned him out. <laughs> right, niggas was waiting on Nixon to come to jail. <laughs> What's happening, Tricky Dick? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna see how tricky you are. Couldn't you see Nixon right? Let me make this perfectly clear. <laughs> I went to jail for income tax evasion, right? You know, I didn't know a motherfucking thing about no taxes. I told the judge, said, Your Honor, I forgot. You know, he said, You remember next year, nigga? Start writing on your ass. <laughs> they give niggas time like it's lunch down there. <laughs> you go down there looking for justice, that's what you find. Just us. <laughs> Gave one nigga 40 years, man. I saw the judge at 40 years straight up. 40 years, boom. That's right, fella, 40 years. You want some more time, buddy? And the dude had a court-appointed lawyer, right, copping the plea for him and said, Your Honor, 
This man is not a heroin dealer per se. He's being manipulated by these people. He was merely trying to get enough monies together to help his dear mom. She had a spinal condition. She needed an operation. And he didn't have the funds to do this, Your Honor. And he was merely trying to raise the money. He tried every odd job he could, and he could not raise the monies. <clears throat> when the officers caught him with the 280 kilos, <laughs> he was trying to purchase a hospital in the Bahamas. <laughs> Judge said, motion denied. <laughs> Nigga was so fucked up when they led him away. He said, thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Made me mad, too, Jack. You know, I said, get that motherfucker 40 years. That's cold-blooded. See, motherfucker sentenced me, but he ain't gonna get my dignity. Kiss my ass, Jack. <laughs> Step right up there. I said, what it is? <laughs> huh? Run it down. <laughs> Judge said, what are you doing the next couple of months, Mr. Pryor? Well, I'll be helping cripple children and anything I can for humanity, sir. <laughs> I had my pants all down by my ankles when he was finished. Just don't stick it in too far, Your Honor, please. <laughs> you got to be funny in jail, I'll give up the booty. <laughs> Wasn't nobody fucking me, no place. I made niggas laugh all day long. <laughs> keep the, keep their mind off the booty. Just <laughs> nigga tried to fuck me, you'd have read about it in Jet. <laughs> Been picture of the week. Because <laughs> doctors be done. Mr. Pryor, would you, would you let the dick go now, please? <laughs> We just want to sew it back on the body. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, um, I was born in P.O. Illinois. What's that? That's the city, nigga. <laughs> you probably wouldn't know nothing about that, see? Old country ass, boy. And when I was little, there was an old man, his name was Mudbone, and he dipped snuff, and he'd sit in front of the barbecue pit, and he'd spit. See, that was his job. I'm pretty sure that was his job, eh? because that's all he did. But he'd tell stories, fascinating stories. Eh? He was fascinating. And I loved him. It made me very happy. Because I'd stay with him and listen to this stuff. See, you're lying some when you live in the old pill. They ain't all fools, see. Well, you don't get to be old being no fool, see. <laughs> so, a lot of young wise men, they're dead in the motherfucker, ain't they? <laughs> so, He'd sit out there and tell these stories. And he said, when I first came up here from Tupelo, Mississippi, I drove up here in a tractor. That's right, 746 miles on one tank of gas. He <laughs> said, I had to leave Tupelo because I was working down there. I was in charge of the levee in Lawrence County. So one night they left a bus and they blamed it on me. See? Now shit, ain't a nigga in the world can hold back no water when they want to go. <laughs> and they asked me, say, why didn't you warn the people? Well, shit, I couldn't be running through that water warning nobody. They were going to find out sooner or later anyway. <laughs> I worked for this white man his name was Bud Jenner. And I worked for him. He was all right to work for, see? He was all right for a white man. He wasn't bad, see? But he had a son named Junior. He was cockeyed. We called him Cockeyed Junior. And he was hard to work for, man, because his eyes went ever what you wait, see? He said, nigga, pick that up, you know, and four or five niggas been down, see?
he fell in love with this girl from Pittsburgh. I went to the depot to pick her up. See, I had a horse named Ginger. I hooked her up, went down, Ginger, went down there, picked her up at the depot. She got off the train. Big woman weighed about 460 pounds. She got off the train sideways. They was pushing her ass off of them. <laughs> well, I saw her. I said, well, shit, fine for him. He cock-eyed. It don't mean nothing to him. <laughs> and I walked over to her, introduced her. I said, ma'am, Miss Ma'am, no name Mudbone. And I tipped my hat. Bitch slapped me across my head. <laughs> said, nigga, pick up the bag. Well, I said, God damn. What kind of shit? I ain't never gotten down. What kind of shit? You know, I said this to myself. <laughs> oh, in them days, that's all a nigga could do was get mad, see? So I got mad. And I tried to help her in the bucket. The bitch snatched away from me. You know, oh, up at the bitch, see? I said, God damn. She stepped on the bucket and the goddamn thing turned over on her. Well, I couldn't laugh. <laughs> I had to bite a hole in my goddamn lip. Blood trickling down and shit. Heart stepped all in her face. <laughs> I took my time by getting that buggy off of him. So I set it up for her. Helped her in the buggy. And I was getting her home, you know, going home. Bitch leaned over and slapped me upside the head again. One of them good ones, too. Sounded pay out like that. So maybe this bitch shot me. Shit. <laughs> well, we kept on home. I'm thinking of shit to do with her now. See? So I got home, went to the tool shed, and got me one of them Craig jigsaw, and I saw the bottom out of the outhouse. <laughs> and I hid in the bushes, and waited for this big collard green eating bitch to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Well, long about 8.30, she come this to go in the bathroom. I'm in the, in the bushes looking at her. She wobbled out to the outside and then opened the door, went in, <laughs> shut the door. I heard a big splash. That's when I got in the tractor and drove up here. I wasn't mad no more either. <laughs> I met when I got up here was Stoney on the barber shop used to give bootleg haircuts. That's right, 25 cents for haircuts, see? And he give you what they call the bowl cut. Then they put a bowl on your head and they cut around it. Made all the niggas look Chinese. Because that's the only way you could get a job on the railroad, see? That's right, they wasn't hiring no niggas, see? Niggas want real money. Chinese work for that Yang money, see? <laughs> Nigga didn't want that shit, see? So that's the best you could do, though, so then we did it. So, Chinese are funny people, boy, and you know what they can do? Eat with sticks. <laughs> Swear to God, I seen the Chinese man have two sticks like this and a bowl of food didn't drop a goddamn speck. <laughs> Nigga lose three pounds of food with a knife and fork. So I had this friend, my partner, his name was Toodlum, see? Old big nigga, big Roebuck nigga, see? Worked over at the foundry lifting motors, see? That's right, made about 38 cents an hour. That was big money in them days, see? So he could lie his ass off, too. All that nigga could tell a lie. So that's how we became friends, see? he tell a lie, I tell a lie, see? And we compliment each other's lies. See? He'd make me laugh all day long. Bless his soul. He told me this lie one time. He told me about the niggas with the big dicks. Said, yeah, you ever heard? Niggas had the bigger dicks in the war. And they were trying to find a place where they could have their contest. See? And they wasn't no freaks. Didn't want everybody looking. So they walking around looking for a secret place. So they walked across the Golden Gate Bridge. And niggas think that water and made them want to piss. See? Well, I said, man, I got to take a leak. And he pulled his thing out with pissing. Other nigga pulled his out, took a piss. <laughs> One nigga said, God damn, it's water cold.
Other niggas say, yeah, and it's deep too. <laughs> Boy, I could lie his ass off. <laughs> say, yeah, and it's deep too. God damn it, so. So, so the nigga got sick, see? I told him he was messing with this girl from Louisiana. And I said, boy, you better leave that hell for alone, see? Because I know she knows something, see? What she did was she put a hex on his ass. That's right, and made that nigga sick. Boy's feet swole up like this. Hands shriveled up. Blood was coming out of his eye. When I seen the nigga scared the shit out of me. I said, told him that you. Say, God damn, nigga, you sick. He said, any fool can see that. He said, tell me what kind of sickness I got. I said, well, what the symptom? What? Say, symptom my ass. You looking at the symptom? <laughs> Say, my goddamn feet are swole up, look like elephant foot. Say, my arms is weak, blood coming out my eye. Plus, I'm in love with a bitch I can't stand. <laughs> well, shit, right away, I know what's wrong, see? I said, boy, that girl done put a mojo on your ass. <laughs> said, I'll take you over to Jefferson, where the voodoo lady live, have a fix it for you. See, because a voodoo lady named Miss Rudolph lived over there. She could do it. That was her name, Miss Rudolph, see? They named her after that deer. <laughs> and she was good, too, man. She had this monkey's foot around her neck and a three-legged monkey. <laughs> yeah. And that monkey didn't give her no trouble. <laughs> that monkey fucked with everybody but her, see? And this monkey's foot stunk all to be down. And she said, smelt that way to keep the spirits and most peoples away. Well, it worked on me because it's been eight years since I seen the bitch, see? So, come since we went over there, I had a 33 packet. Stop, got a little gas. I drove the nigga over there, made him pay for it. <laughs> we get over there, I'm the one got to knock on the door, see? So I go up to the door, I knock on the door. She opened the door, man, the funk rushed out the house, knocked me to my goddamn knees, and I'm looking up at her. She ain't got on no bazil, and the biggest titties in the world, they were swollen up, looked like that nigga's feet. And she had a tattoo on each titter, had a big eye on one titter, and a pair of lips on the other. And I'm praying to God I ain't got to kiss nothing, see? <laughs> so I was looking at this titty, looking at me, and it looked like it winked at me. She said, boy, get your ass in here. Get off the floor. So I walked into the house. I'm kind of nervous because bugs and shit crawling around all on the floor. There's a goddamn bat flying around like this, see? Now this monkey comes in there so fucking with me, jumped all on my neck and shit, and it felt funny because he got them little monkey hands, be fucking with your ears, you know? And I'm trying to act like I'm petting this motherfucker, but I'm poking him in the eye, get him off me, see? Because I don't want to offend this bitch with this monkey foot, see? Because she scratched your ass with that foot, that's all over. And I said, Miss Rudolph, Miss Rudolph, please, can you do something about the monkey? She said, I don't have to do shit about the monkey. The monkey live here, nigga. You visiting. <laughs> well, shit, I had to accept that, see? So I explained to her what was happening. I said, my partner's sick. Please, he needs some help. Would you be so kind as to help him? I said, the feet are swollen up. Eyes and shit, he all messed up. I said, now, first of all, I got to explain to you, I don't have no money. I said, I'm, I'm posing as a Chinaman working on the railroad. And all I got is that Yang money. She said, no, I don't want none of that. She said, what you do, though, come Thanksgiving, bring me by a goose or a turkey. That's all right. You know, I said, well, shit, that's fine with me, because it was June then. <laughs> if I don't ever see this bitch no more in life, it's all right with me, see? And just about that time, a big motherfucking tarantula, this big, crawled up my arm, round my neck, I almost shit on myself, man. <laughs> Went down this arm, under my hand, I tried to mash him. When I lift my hand up, he was gone. That's when I put my hand on my knife. 
Because I figured if somebody get hurt in here, I ain't going to be the last one, see? I said, Miss Rudolph, please tell me what happened to the tarantula. She said, that ain't none of your goddamn business. But if you don't bring me that turkey, you will see him again. So when I left the house, I'm thinking turkey. There's a big pretty bird in my goddamn mind, see? I don't give a shit if she's in Timbuktu, the bitch got a turkey coming from me. So I get out to the car, not two of them, he don't want to get out the car. I said, nigga, you better get your ass up out of this car. Much shit I done been through in there. I'll kick you on one of them big foots. I just said that to him. I wouldn't really kick him, see, but nigga made me mad, see it. So I helped him out the car. We walk up to the house. This nigga Palmer housing like this. this motherfucking feet is hurting him, see. I'm trying not to laugh at him because he's my father. So I help him in the house. He get in the house and see all them bugs and shit crawling around. He try to lift his feet up, but he's scared. Because <laughs> them feet hurt and them bugs is fucking with him. All he can do is go, mm, mm. I said, nigga, sit your ass down. Fuck them bugs. So just pretend like it's furniture. <laughs> so the nigga, he eased down on the couch. He had to ease down because he got the piles. <laughs> he eased down. Yeah, this bitch done fuck with him, see? Tore his ass up. He eased down, stretched his feet out. Just about that time, she come from out the back, back room, had a big wash pan. And she said a few words over it, you know. And then she squatted and pissed. That's right, she pissed for 15 minutes. Old strong ammonia pissed too. Then she slid the pot over by the boy's feet. Said, Junior, put your feet in that. Well, I'm sure enough trying not to laugh now, nah, see. Well, this nigga put his feet in his piss, it's all over for me, see. I said, go ahead, boy. <laughs> See, because I'm going to talk about his ass 44 years he put his feet in the bitch. <laughs> well, I guess the nigga said nothing from nothing lead nothing. <laughs> so he put his foot in there, <laughs> put the other one, the other one almost didn't fit in there. I said, oh, God, this bitch going to piss some more. <laughs> so I pushed the foot down, <laughs> got covered up. Water come into the bubbling and boiling. Sparks start flying. Goddamn bugs was running all crazy. Bat was flying around. Monkeys start shitting everywhere. That's when I took my knife out then. See. And she ran over and stroked this nigga with the monkey's foot. And he was trembling like that. I tried to get the door open. It was locked. I start stabbing this motherfucker like this. Then all of a sudden it got real quiet. And the piss turned blue. And I said, holy Jesus, holy Jesus. Because I ain't never seen no blue pill. Well, the boy eased his feet out the piss and they was healthy. The nigga had healthy feet. But it was real tiny. The nigga had little baby feet. I said, Junior, look at your feet. He looked down, seen his feet. The nigga went berserk. Killed the monkey, threw the bat out the window, start kicking that bitch in the air, and them little feet was going like them. Nigga wore out three pair of kneecaps, kicking her in the air. And he snatched the monkey foot off her neck, swallowed that. Well, he shouldn't have done that. Or they came and got his ass and took him to the zoo. And you can see him if you go down there. He's the polar bear with little tiny feet. The worst thing about jail is uh, that your woman come and visit you, man. And they get funky when a nigga's locked up. Right, you be eight inches of glass, you can't reach them motherfuckers. Right, and she be talking about, I never did like your mama. you talking to? <laughs> talking to you, nigga. You the one in jail. <laughs> and fucking everybody. <laughs> 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 
please, God, just let my fingers ease through this. Because mother- <laughs> you be in love and shit, you don't want nobody in your puss. <laughs> right? Especially you find one that fits. You don't want no motherfucker stretching your pussy out of shape. <laughs> Here. Woman, get ready to leave. You have an argument about the pussy, right? Say, oh, baby, please don't leave. Take the TV, but leave the pussy, please. <laughs> me and my lady boy. I don't mind women leaving me, though, see? But they tell you why. Yeah, fuck that. Just leave. <laughs> right? Because there ain't shit you can say when they're talking to you. <laughs> right? You know it's true. <laughs> All you can do is stand there and look silly, right? You be like, And shit gets too thick, right? Niggas got a great answer. Well, fuck it then. (laughs) Take your shit and get out. Yeah, motherfucker, pack this shit. You packing shit? Pack this motherfucking shit. Fucking with me, goddamn. I don't give a fuck. Put it under your drawers. I don't give a fuck where you put this shit. Shit, I'm gonna find me some new pussy. Women come back at your ass, all right? You know, you had two more inches of dick, you'd find some new pussy here. <laughs> see, no. See, you're just trying to fuck with me, see? No, you don't want me to jump on your ass so you have something to say when you leave. Uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't going for that shit. I know the dick was good to you. If it wasn't good, why was you hollering? <laughs> I was hollering to keep from laughing in your face! <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> you have to regroup on a woman, Jack, you know. Because they outthink our ass. But we outreason them motherfuckers, see? If we get two minutes, all we got to do is get two minutes, but it's hard to break them motherfuckers up when they get a roll going. They leave you in the middle of the floor babbling, baby. You have to go to your psychology bag on their ass. Hey, baby, hey, wait, fuck all this arguing, you know what I mean? Let's uh, just, uh, be cool, all right? Just take your time and pack your shit. All right? Take your time, pack your shit. Put your shit in the bag. Is that bag going to be big enough? Because if not, you can use one of mine. Right. Right. You cool? You got money and everything? Because I guess you don't need no money? You cool? Good. No, what do you mean? Why am I being, I just wanted to be right. Shit, I can't make you stay if you want to leave. You just go ahead and pack this. You understand? We started off as human beings. I wanted to end that way. You did? All you have to do is find another way out of here other than that door. Because <laughs> you try to leave me, bitch. I'm going to kill your ass. I put the motherfucking bag down. I just put the goddamn bag on. <laughs> and the matter you get, the calmer the woman gets, right? Get your ass off, goddammit! I'm leaving. I don't want to see your ass again! Don't worry, you won't. I'm gonna kill the dog because I ain't gonna feed the motherfucker. <laughs> Get your ass away. <laughs> Come here. Man. Why didn't you bite the bitch? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I had one lady left me. She had a dog, and when she left, the dog came up and talked to me. My dog, hey, Rich, uh, I'm fixing to split. I know it's been a pleasure, don't get me wrong, you know what I mean, but you're a little tardy with the food, nigga. And she feed a motherfucker three times a day, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna check you out, you take care. Yeah, I'm gonna leave a little piss over here for you to remember me by. <laughs> take care. <laughs> Could I get some water? Does anyone have any water? No. no. Just some clear water. Oh, you got some? Oh, thank you very much. 250, nigga, six. 
The nigga was serious too. <laughs> he was not joking. I drank this because sometimes you be up here, man, and you get the white and shit all on the side of your lips. You wouldn't be nasty looking. You know? And you niggas wouldn't tell me either, right? You know, but you'd be sitting out there looking, look at that nasty motherfucker, man. This, yeah, I sure would help a little ice in this motherfucker. God damn. This is some nasty shit without some ice. Huh? No, nigga, don't put your big motherfucking hand in there. <laughs> damn. Woo! If your dick anything like your hands, I feel sorry for your woman. <laughs> White folks, they date different than we do. See, they go home tonight, they'll kiss their girls goodnight at the door and shit. Don't even think about no pussy. This big. Good night, dear. Been a pleasure being with you. <laughs> Get home. <laughs> Nigga spend $34, he gonna fuck somebody. Now that's the bottom line. <laughs> somebody giving up some. <laughs> Motherfucker work too hard to get this for a good night kiss. Because <laughs> you can see that guy. Say, bitch, what is that? The fuck you mean, good night? Yeah, well, somebody in there gonna fuck. Yeah, well, wake up your daddy. Yeah, I'll wait. And black fathers understand that shit too. They come to say, nigga, what's wrong with you all that goddamn noise? I'm gonna tell you what's wrong, motherfucker. The bitch, $35, good night, that's what's wrong. You spent $35 on my baby, she didn't give you no. Hey, Gloria! Get your ass down here. You better get this nigga something before I have to hurt him. $35 a lot of money, not now. You must be rich, nigga. Oh, you are, huh? Wake up your mama too. Ladies are beautiful. You are beautiful. We love you very much. Really. Because you know why? Because ladies don't fart. They know ladies don't fart. Women poop. Right? They go, poop. Excuse me. I made a smelly. <laughs> no, bitch. I think you shit. <laughs> Women are funny, Jack. They can regroup out of anything, right? You ever be making love and air get in the pussy? Right? It'd be... <laughs> Women recover beautiful, right? It'd be... It's talking to you, daddy. <laughs> White church is too scary for me. They make that weird noise when you're going to have that thing. Pictures of Jesus hanging around looking at your ass. <laughs> Black church, you get a show with your money, see. White church, all they do is Jesus was one for buy. Black church, they get down. Our text for today concerns life in the beginning as it manifests itself through the eternal complexities of renunciation as opposed to just the position of the inferior mind. Uh, let us turn our text to... Uh... Here, sound my way, man. Well, let's turn our text to the Book of Wonder, where it say, 
a boy was born in Hot Time, Mississippi, <laughs> surrounded by four walls that were not pretty. His parents, that's two peoples, <laughs> give them love and affection just to keep them strong, moving in the right direction. Give them just enough. I said just enough for the city. <laughs> then he shift on your ass, right? You know, he begin now. You know, I first met God in 1929. I never will forget this. You see, I was walking down the street. I don't believe you heard me. I said I was walking down the street. I was not running. I was walking. Eating a tuna fish sandwich. And I heard this voice call unto me. And I knew it was the voice of God. For it came from without a dark alleyway. As only the voice of God can come. However, my brothers and sisters, I did not venture down that dark alleyway. For it might not have been the voice of God. But two or three niggas with a baseball bat. God only knows. And he wasn't talking. And I wouldn't walk in. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Richard Fryer. Richard Fryer. <laughs>